All right, guys, welcome to a brand new episode of SideQuest Podcast. Listen in and level up. I have a great episode for you today, but first, as always, let's get through the show notes. If you're not following the Facebook page, head over to Facebook, type SideQuest Fitness into the search bar and like the page. There, you're going to get updates on podcast episodes, articles when they get posted, and you're going to get a brand new taco recipe every Tuesday for Taco Camp. Uh, plus lots of other shenanigans and nerd talk throughout the week. So make sure you head over to Facebook. You can follow me on Instagram. My handle is SideQuestFM. If you want to see some cool videos and random stuff on Instagram as well, you can follow me on Instagram, same handle, SideQuestFM, or follow me on Snapchat, SideQuestFit. Follow me there. Send me your questions. Uh, I want to get all the questions from you, help you as much as I can on your fitness journey or your journey in life, whatever it may be. But head over to Snapchat, SideQuestFit, follow me there. You get a little more personal, in-depth look at the shenanigans I get into throughout uh, every day. Uh, But I do love getting questions from the community, so please send them out to me. If you have not left a review for the podcast, please head over to iTunes. If you're not listening on iTunes and you listen on SoundCloud or Stitcher, leave a review there as well. When you leave reviews, it helps me move up the charts on the iTunes store so that more people can see and hear the amazing guests that I've had on and have on each and every single week. So make sure you head over there. And don't forget, if you haven't picked up your copy of The 7 Principles of Fat Loss, head over to sidequestfitness.com forward slash 7 principles and you can pick up your copy of The 7 Principles of Fat Loss. These are the same 7 principles I follow each and every day and teach my clients to help them shred away more body fat, unlock heroic strength, and just look better naked. So if you want to unlock strength or just look better naked in the mirror, head over again, grab those seven principles of fat loss, and start following those today. What's up, guys? Welcome to the show. So over the last few months, you have heard me talking about my online clients, and you've heard from a few of my online clients as well about what they've done Uh, on their fitness quest with me. With summer heading in, I am taking a few more clients on to help people get ready for summer, help you get ready for uh, bikini season or swimsuit season, or maybe this is your first time. Maybe you've decided that that's it. You want to get in shape and you need someone to help you with your journey on your journey. You need a Gandalf uh, and a Samwise to guide you as you head into Frodo. And I am your Gandalf and Samwise all packed in to one. I am taking on a few more clients. If you are interested, head over to sidequestfitness.com slash coach and check out the page. You can apply there. You can find out more about what coaching entails and also see some of the amazing transformations that my clients have had while working with me. So head over to sidequestfitness.com slash coach and apply today. All right, guys, welcome to an episode. I have a great guest for you today. I apologize if there are any issues with the sound quality on this. Uh, Yours truly forgot to bring his podcasting mic on the road while he was at the Fitness Summit in Kansas City, where I did this interview with my guest, Mitch Calvert, and uh, had to use the microphone on my MacBook because I was too excited to come eat barbecue and hang out with a bunch of bros and get some really great knowledge gains and forgot my mic. I'm not perfect. But anyways, this is a great episode with Mitch. We talk about manhood. We talk about purpose. We talk about a lot of stuff. But let's get into it, and let's hear from Mitch Calvert. Step up and you gotta get it fitness Post Rob at the moment and the quest is You gotta check in and wreck it, you're breaking personal records And with the help of the guests you won't be guessing on the lessons That's a plus five fears Got a low key bamf right here You wanna meet him, there's no better way to greet him Than to strike a boss pose, take a look at the Guys, mirror. welcome to the show, I have a great guest for you uh, Finally, after some technical difficulties uh, I was able to get him on the show So I'm excited to, uh, to have him on and, and chat with him uh, he is another Canadian. I'm telling you, man, like I was at the fitness summit this weekend and, uh, there's a lot of really great, awesome fitness people out of Canada. Uh, so, uh, they're, uh, they know what they're doing up there. They know what they're doing up there. Um, but the one and the only Mitch Calvert, welcome. A lot to of cold show. nights, a lot of time to think. And... Sorry, I cut you off. No, you're good. You're good. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of cold nights, a lot of time to, you know, think and, and figure shit out. 
Exactly. <laughs> well, Mitch, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. It's nice to get on with you. It's been I've been waiting for this day for a long time. <laughs> well, thanks for making me feel like like a big deal, Mitch. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, so what do you, uh, uh, r- r- random question. So like, you know, we were chatting beforehand, like people come up to you and they, they give you compliments on things and, and you say that, like, what is your reaction when someone gives you a compliment on something that like you wrote or something you did? And like, do you, do you say thank you? Do you take it? Or do you like sort of like poo poo it a little bit? Like, do you feel awkward doing that? Oh yeah. I'm in the poo poo camp for sure. I tried to flex the, the uh, compliments. I give them something back. It's just, I just feel weird with it. Yeah. What? Why do you like? Why do you think you feel weird? Like you know, just sort of jiving here. But like, why do you feel weird about it? These are getting deep on me here already. First question. Uh, you know, I. That's a good question. I think I've always had this little self confidence issue dating back to when I was really heavy in high school, and then so anything that I get through fitness, I don't really fully. Uh, appreciate i think that's part of it so i don't want to dig too deep on myself here i think that's where it originates all right all right um so you know you have a great story mitch uh you know you uh former fat kid and you had a, a podcast with jordan poggle for a little while uh what was it former form i don't remember what the title of it was um yeah former fatty fitness yeah we, we slacked off and we weren't just as dedicated as you are to podcasting <laughs> Uh, two sketches is hard. Yeah. Yeah. It, that's dude. It's, it, you know, it's, it's hard to get people on sometimes cause you know, everyone's busy and, um, you know, uh, things happen. Uh, I like, I, yeah, it happens. Um, absolutely. Yeah. So Mitch, uh, you don't have to go back into your story and you don't have to dig deep. I mean, people can go to your site and read about that, but like, what's something in your story that people would be really surprised uh, to know about your fitness journey? Well, it's definitely an unconventional one, right? When you think of the unconventional fitness people, you think of Dan John, right? You kind of stumbled into it. Uh, I think you started out as a high school teacher, right? And I actually went into communications as a writer because um, I was heavy and fitness was the, the, the furthest thing from my mind. But uh, well, going for that communications degree, I really got the itch for the gym. Fell in love with bodybuilding in particular. Um, and I went through and completed that degree cause that's what my parents told me was the only way. Right. And got a safe job after, after university was, well, I thought it was safe at the time journalism, which is actually not so safe anymore with newspapers cutting back left and right. But so I kind of rode that train out for a while and then I made the shift to, to fitness over the last, you know, it's almost 10 years now, which is crazy. But, um, yeah, it definitely started out from a very unconventional place. So, in, in fact, a lot of that communications training has served me well because it's, well, in communicating with clients, but also in getting your message out there online, it's important to be able to, to write and communicate, right? Yeah, I mean, in, in this day and age, you, you, you have to, to be able to do that. What, do you think that that is a strength for you? Like, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, I, I've talked to a few people, you know, this weekend here in Kansas City, and, and, and a lot of people that, you know, are new will reach out to me and ask me questions. Um, and they ask about writing and I mean, look, I, I've gotten better, uh, you know, like even, even this week and I'm, I'm not jerking myself off when I say this, I'm just telling my story. Um, all right, fine. I am jerking myself <laughs> off a little bit, but, um, yeah. Kia Kadim and I are working out. Are you jerking off right now? Uh, no, no. That's impressive. No, that would, that would be awkward. Uh, okay, good. uh I never wear pants while podcasting. <laughs> Or at least now you think I'm not wearing pants. So every time someone hears me on a podcast, they're going to be like, is Robbie wearing pants? Hmm. Yeah, just go with that mental image. Are you completely buck naked or is there like some undergarments? Uh, I'm, I'm picturing kind of a Speedo type apparatus. Uh, I, uh, I only ever podcast in my Star Wars Speedos with the lightsabers. Like nice. right, right on the uh, – there's LED lightsabers, you know. Um, That's sick. But no, so like Kia, Kia complimented me. He was like, dude, your, your writing is so like great now. I really love it. And I was like, oh, dude, like, like, thank you. But like, I don't, I'm still new. I'm still getting better. Um, you know, do you feel like you came into the industry and are able to communicate better because you have that degree? Yeah, absolutely. That was the area where a lot of trainers need to focus on. And I didn't need to focus on that so much. 
So what I did instead was get a lot of the practical experience by jumping into a commercial gym setting and training people that way. And I still train people in my basement, right? A side business here apart from the online component. So I like to have that in person, really getting that hands-on experience that a lot of trainers get through the school system, right? To kind of balance it out because that was the area I needed to focus on more so than writing and getting, getting the message out there of what my story was. What for you as a coach has been uh, the the most beneficial lesson that you've learned uh, in working with people? That you can't just give someone a meal plan and expect them to follow it, right? There's You've got to kind of dig deeper beyond that initial reason for why they started with you and keep them motivated throughout, right? Keep their, their building habits. So I find that coaching relationship is really rewarding, obviously very challenging too because fitness is one of the hardest things. I mean, it's a simple concept, eat less food than you burn and exercise, right? But to actually apply that and be consistent with it is the really hard part. So I think that's what the coaching relationship really does for people is get them, you know, focused on these mini goals and going beyond what they could do on their own, right? So that's really something I overlooked initially because I got the itch for fitness and just fell in love with it 100%. But a lot of my clients aren't in that position, right? They, they, fitness isn't their top priority. Right. Um, so how, speaking of fitness not being your top priority, um, I want to go back to, to old Mitch um, before, uh, before you, you got into fitness. What, where was, where was your health, uh, in that instance, um, Mitch at that, at that time and what, uh, what changed for you? Like what was your tipping point? Yeah. Well, my, uh, level 61 character in EverQuest was jacked, but, um, I still personally, I was, uh, well, I was a, a beast essentially. I pretty much lived a sedentary life where I would come home after, after high school at this point. And I would game until as late as I could. Sometimes it'd be 2, 3 in the morning uh, when my parents thought I was sleeping, right? But that came with junk food and a complete lack of exercise. Because after quitting hockey in grade 10, I think, I just ballooned. I think I put on 20 pounds the year after that. Another 20 in senior year. So when I graduated, I was nearly 250 pounds at that point. And, you know, I overlooked my health, but I could barely go up a flight of stairs without, you know, panting heavily. And, uh, I mean, it took a while to get that spark. And I think it first happened in high school when, sure enough, I had a gym teacher who brought in one of those Omron fat <laughs> body fat measurement devices and uh, had everyone in the class grip it and get their, their score tested, right? And I had the worst score among me the guys at like 36%. I mean, they're not the most accurate thing, but nonetheless, I was the uh, the highest score. So that was a wake-up call. But I didn't know where to start at that point, so I, I pretty much spun my wheels and took little action. I did some reading and, uh, you know, read some blogs and stuff, but didn't really know where to start at that point. So it took a while before I eventually ventured into the gym and, and got the itch for it, but it was certainly a process of, starting and quitting over and over again that first year. So, I mean, the actual point when I finally made the commitment was uh, where I committed. It was basically I told my dad that, you know, I, I'll quit video games in a year if I don't lose this 50 pounds, and I want you to hold me to it. And I put a note on my computer screen where I played my games, and that's what kind of drove me forward because I would have the odd slip back when I realized, you know, I could lose my video game addiction here. If I don't get this handle. So putting that, uh, that date in my head that I had a year to do this and having myself accountable to my dad at the same time, he was more than happy to have me quit. He hated, hated the fact I spent so much time in the basement. But uh, that combination is really what drove me forward because I had no choice but to follow through. So, you know, uh, reading through some of your articles you uh, and your site, you mentioned a sticky note that you use to blackmail yourself. Is that the sticky note uh, that you use to blackmail yourself to get into shape? That's, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, it sat on my, uh, my laptop or my computer screen. I didn't have a laptop at that time for the entire year. And it just said you have a year to 
to lose this weight or, uh, you know, are your video, like you're going to throw them out? Like what was on that note? Yeah. Yeah. Your dad's going to destroy your computer. So I mean, he was going to physically break the thing and uh, I wouldn't have any, any option after that point. So it was looking a little, a little scary at the end, but I dropped more than 15 pounds. The last month, kind of a starvation diet. Wouldn't recommend that, but uh, that's what it took. So, so you, you lost that 50. How long, how long, like, did you put it off for a few months? Did you start day one? Uh, like, what was your process? Uh, you know, because you said, like, you kind of went on a, a very quick fat loss plan to lose those last, last 15 so you could keep your, your, uh, your gains. But, like, what, mm-hmm. how long did it take you to start? Yeah, well, initially I just started these run walks around the neighborhood. It was middle of winter in Canada, so I froze my butt off, but uh, I jogged as much as I could, and eventually I got more and more distance to it. And my parents helped me out. Um, we all got a membership to a, a local JCC gym here, a family membership. So they would go, and I would go as well a couple times a week, and I would ramp that up. But I didn't see, initially I lost maybe 10 pounds right off the hop. And then I hit a bit of a wall there, and I didn't realize what I was doing. And that's when I started looking into diet. Downloaded uh, Burn the Fat, Feed the Muscle with Tom Venuto. And that was sort of opened my eyes to, okay, diet is a big part of this too. I can't just run this fat off. Uh, I need to uh, also eat properly, eat more protein. Um, and I don't even remember the basics of the diet. I think it was mostly you know, protein and low glycemic carbs, which was a big deal at the time like sweet potatoes and uh, brown rice, that type of thing. So boring food. But I, I was really consistent with that diet as well. So throughout the time, that, that kind of pushed me back even further um, when I started eating better, training as well, started lifting weights a bit. Um, <laughs> tried to load up this, this barbell with 185 pounds my first time. And... Uh, a guy had to lift it off me, which was quite embarrassing. But luckily, I didn't quit at that point. And uh, it was just slow and steady weight loss throughout until that last month when I really had to ramp things up. Um, so, Mitch, you, uh, you work with a lot of guys and, and you, you talk a lot about, uh, about manhood and being a man. And that's, you know, it's, it's uh, since man camp and even before that, uh, I've been thinking about it and sort of writing and trying to figure out my own identity uh, of what that means today. Um, and you mentioned that there was a tipping point that changed how you viewed yourself as a man. What was that tipping point for you? Yeah, the tipping point. I mean, I just, I had moves at that time, right, in high school. Uh, I mean, I may have had a chance with a few girls. Like, I could have went for a senior prom date. Uh, but I just didn't have any confidence in myself, right? And it was kind of linked to my weight, fair or not. That's how I viewed myself, Right as the fat kid that didn't deserve to, to have what, what I needed in my life. So I felt like getting in shape had to be the first, you know, domino to fall for, in order for me to find myself and really, uh, really live the life I wanted to live. So, I mean, you realize after you get in shape that, okay, there's more to the story here. Um, <laughs> confidence goes a little deeper than just how you look physically. So I, I found that out after the fact, but nonetheless, getting in shape and striving for something and having goals that all translated nicely to, uh, to living that life beyond that. So I would say the tipping point was that initial foray into the gym and really committing to something right for myself, my overall health. And, uh, it's just kind of spiraled there. All right. All right. Um, how, how has that morphed over time? Um, you know, as you, you, you know, you're a father, um, you know, you, you're a business owner, you're, you're still, you know, you're a fit pro, uh, you know, you got to walk the walk and talk the talk as well. Like has, has any of that changed as, as you've grown as, uh, as a man? Yeah, well, I think it's less so that rah, rah, testosterone, alpha male perspective that I may have had when I first got in shape I was in my mid twenties. I thought that was the cool way to, to be a man. When in fact, um, it's more about how you are as a person, how much you give back, how much value you provide to uh, not just your clients, but through your interactions with people throughout the day. So that's sort of been a learning process for me to realize, you know, being a man isn't just about that, 
that facade, but about also living, you know, really the stoic way of life, right? You you talk about this quite a bit. I mean, that's kind of really been my, my guiding principles over the last few years. I would say it's fairly recently where I realized um, just through reading through guys like you that uh, there's more to being a man than just being tough, being jacked. Even though I still buy Schmedium t-shirts all the time <laughs> and uh, wear them with pride, it, it goes beyond that for sure. Yeah, I, I, that you know that's uh, that's something that Brian Cron has has talked a lot about, um, you know, and, and sort of figuring that out. Uh, and it's something that you know uh, I think you know we we're told certain things as as men about you know being this way or being that way, uh, and and I think there is. There are some things I agree with and some things I don't, but like you're now we're trying to find out like how do we fit in? Like we don't want to be our fathers and our grandfathers. We want to be something different. Um, what is that? Because we don't want to lose you know who we are um, and what we believe you know or or like you know just our identity. Like we don't want to lose that part. But how do we make it fit and make it not be as douchey as you know like it can feel sometimes? And that's I mean that's even in fitness like. Um, you know, people see you and I with like our Schmidium shirts on and like our, our arms and they probably think that we're just a dumb meathead. Um, you know, like mm -hmm. people thought that about Arnold and the dude became a governor and like, you know, a, a best-selling author and like the biggest movie star in Hollywood. Um, you know, he was more than, than what you saw. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Trying to figure all that out. So I think it's a lifelong thing. Oh, it's yeah, it's not easy. yeah. Mm -hmm. It is for sure. Um, and we're all we're all unique in that way too. I mean, I mean, the media portrays husbands a certain way, right? It's sort of almost the other direction. Big pushovers, and I find in practice being a big pushover isn't healthy for your relationship either. So, kind of have to have that uh, male female dynamic in the household. And I mean, by all means, there's a lot of respect there, but you still need to be, you know, a man. I, I find that, that uh, that's a challenging balance for sure. And we're, we're sending some mixed signals. I think in that instance, you know, uh, in some ways, like, yes, you know, the uh, you see it in commercials, like you have the, the clueless husband, like, um, honey, I lived by myself for a few years. Like, I don't like I know how to take care of myself. Like, maybe I let the laundry get a little too piled up. But like I know what to do. Like, I'm not I'm not an idiot. Uh, I can I can I I would survive like 20 years you know by myself. I, I think I'm good. Um, yeah. I mean I'm not gonna lie. I probably wouldn't clean my room up as much as I should. But you know uh, that's just me. <laughs> um, yeah. But I, but I think that dynamic is true. And I think what what makes it hard for men uh, is that we don't talk about those things. So like we just assume that we just if we avoid it it will go away. But it doesn't. And you can't just not talk about those things in a relationship um, because they are the things that will destroy your relationship if you let them build up. 100%. Yeah, for sure, because it's under the surface. Yeah, and you have to kind of see where they're coming from as well, where they want more open lines of communication than you are comfortable with, at least in my case. Uh, so that's been a, a balancing act for myself as well. Yeah, it's, you know, it's... And sometimes I look at it uh, as I'm thinking about, you know, being in a relationship and communication that like, you know, when you have clients that, that speak to you and they talk to you and, you know, and, uh, and you're communicating, like you can really help them. You can put them in the right direction. They sort of start to figure their own stuff out mentally. Um, but if they don't talk to you or you never hear from them, you have no idea what's going on. Um, and then they come out of nowhere and you're like, I didn't even know this was happening. Um, you know, so like it's. What is it that Tim says? The uh, your success in life is predicated on the uh, number of uncomfortable conversations you're willing to have. Um, mm -hmm. So that, like, yeah, conversation might suck, but it's better than like you know getting divorce papers one day. Um, but uh, let's 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 get into some fun stuff. We've been a little deep for for a little while, uh, Mitch. Um, Mitch, if if you could combine like two cereal flavors together and make the most epic cereal, like. Ever, what would those be? Oh shit, that's a good question. 
Uh, well, I, you know, I'm a big Frosted Flakes fan and a big Cinnamon Toast Crunch fan. Those are my top two. So I would combine those two, but I get them extra soggy. That's my secret. So they soak in the milk. Yeah, they soak in the milk for a good five minutes before I touch it. Well, yeah, because, I mean, at, at, at least with the Cinnamon Toast Crunch, you get that, like, cinnamon milk, and that's, like, mm -hmm. that's, where exactly. it's, that's where it's at. Yeah, you get a little bit of that mm -hmm. cinnamon Drink. down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, is, uh, yeah. that, is, that is where it's at. Mitch, what's your... Uh, Give me drinks, man. Do what? Dieting. Come on. Um, so you, 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 you were a big gamer back in the day, uh, you know, uh, and you talked about that with your story. Um, what, uh, what's a game that you always wanted to play, but never got your hands on? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, you know, sadly world of Warcraft, I never got into, even though I wanted to, um, at the time it first came out, I was all in on EverQuest, EverQuest 2. So I didn't want to give up my potential to level up in that game. So I sacrificed everything else for that because it was so slow moving after level 60 to move beyond that, right? So that was sort of the main game because I played some first-person shooters at the same time and before EverQuest. Uh, Team Fortress Classic, Counter-Strike. I was big into TFC. I, was in, I flew down for uh, competitions and everything in that one. Um, but yeah, WoW would have to be the one because... In fact, after I got done with EverQuest 2, I pretty much cut out video games cold turkey, and I haven't gone back. So that's kind of an interesting angle that I, we're probably going on almost a decade without touching an online video game, which is crazy. Wow. Like, so, like, not even, like, like, mobile games, like consoles? Like, you literally just, like, put it down and you were done? Everything, yeah. I have not, not even been tempted. It's crazy. Even when my buddies have a game out, I never really gravitate or pick up a controller I just it's it's a weird thing it's like I cut it out from my life because it was part of my old life when in fact I, I feel like I'm gonna you know try to dabble in it and get too addicted again and not be able to stop maybe that's where I'm, my head's at I don't know interesting interesting um so you so uh you were obviously a, P a PC guy um what is mm -hmm. so was like EverQuest really just your like? Obviously, you said you did EverQuest, you did uh, Counter Strike, uh, Team Fortress. Um, is there a PC game that like you think everyone at some point in their life should play? You know what? I think the uh, the team aspect of Team Fortress Classic it's in the name, of course. But that was incredible for team play because there was so much uh, strategy involved, right? To capture the flag. You had matches against other teams, and I found that I built up a lot of good communication skills that way with teammates through that game that I could translate to, you know, playing beer league hockey today. I mean, it was <laughs> it was a really unique game. It never seemed to catch on. I don't know. I, there was sort of a, a certain amount of skill involved with bunny hopping and comp jumps and that that Counter-Strike didn't have. Counter-Strike was a little more simple in that aspect. So maybe it was the complicated uh, skill development, but for whatever reason, it, it had a kind of a niche following and never went mainstream. But that would be that's probably the, my favorite game that uh, I would recommend everyone had played at one point, but uh, it's no longer around. Uh, there, yeah. Uh, well, I think not classic, but I think you can still play Team Fortress Two. Um, right. There might be there might be servers for it somewhere. I'm sure. I'm sure there's someone. Still playing those. Um, all right, all right, all right. Um, so let's go back into sort of uh, you know the, the the writing, the blogging, the, the fitness sort of stuff. Um, Mitch, what keeps you going? You know, this doesn't feel like work to me, right? I mean, I want to help guys like my former self because I remember where I was, kind of lost and confused those first few months, that first year. You know, not knowing what where to start. I mean. The internet was there. I had information at my fingertips like they do today, but I still just got overwhelmed by it all. And I felt like, you know, my fate was to be a fat kid and I couldn't overcome my genetics and I had all these barriers in my head when in fact we all can become what we want to become uh, with, with hard work and commitment to fitness. So that's sort of why I do this is that's why I focus more in on men because that's my story, and that's why I, you know, like helping the most. 
because I know where they they're coming from, where their pain points are, and how it feels. Because I mean, men, there's a lot of perception that men are okay being overweight, right? Oh, we're just a funny guy; it's all good. We make fun of ourselves, but there are some some confidence issues tied to that. I know there's lots of men out there who who uh, are letting their weight hold them back from really living the lives they want to live. So I help guys get the fat off so they can then have the life they want to live, what they're capable of living, essentially. So with that, Mitch, uh, something you wrote, um, I'm not sure if it was an or I don't remember if it was in an article or in your About Me page, um, but you, you, you said this, you know, that you need to become the person you envision in every way if you want this for life. So who is that person for Mitch Calvert? That person is uh, just a man, essentially, right? But a man beyond the alpha male perception, like I talked about earlier, who is a good husband, great friend, right? Every aspect of his life is on point, right? He's perfectly healthy, for one. Blood work is good, that sort of thing. But in his day-to-day life, he's got a ton of energy, right? He can live up to his his uh, what he's meant to live up to, uh, his standards for life, right? So I found getting in shape just made me more motivated, more energetic. Uh, I was able to set goals and achieve them, and I didn't have that, you know, wake up in the bad frame of mind and kind of mope through the day, right? So fitness led me to change in that respect, so I owe it a ton for that. Why, why for you, Mitch, is that your driving goal? Just because I know the old me and where I was, where my headspace was. I wouldn't make eye contact with people, right? I had no confidence. Uh, and I, you know, buried myself in video games because I, I could kind of live out these characters that I wanted to be in real life that I didn't think I was, you know, capable of achieving or becoming. So... There's no turning back at this point, right? I mean, it's I know what it feels like to be on the other side. People perceive you a certain way because you carry yourself a certain way. And, uh, I mean, it's just it's so much better living this way, for sure. For what? All right, so let's say Mitch uh, of 15 years ago and Mitch of today meet. Uh what do you think they would say to each other? Well, I would say to the old me that uh, keep your head up, kid, because <laughs> uh, you have lots to offer this world, right? And uh, to believe in yourself, but also to uh, to start working for it because you weren't working. Because uh, I would always look for shortcuts in school, right? Obviously, when it came to my health. Uh, you know, cheating at video games. <laughs> Looking for the shortcut, it all translated um, into everything I did at that time. So I didn't feel like I I was living up to myself. Um, so that's what I would tell my older self. What my older self would tell my the new me, uh, he might pass judgments on this one and assume that I, I didn't work for it and I was born in this way. And uh, that's, you know, you just had good genetics or whatever the case may be. And um, that was sort of the headspace I had, right, back then. That people who were better me than me kind of got lucky or they were just born that way. And it just wasn't my calling to, to be, you know, to live up to my full potential. Where... All right, I'm trying to think how to phrase this question about your uh, your full potential. What does your full potential look like to you? Good question. I think it's just uh, like living the life I am now, but continually improving upon myself every year when it comes to fitness, comes to my own uh, just intelligence, right? Continually learning, not just getting to a place where I get comfortable and stop. A process of learning when it comes to not just fitness, but you know, living as a whole as a man. Um, so yeah, what was the question again? Sorry, <laughs> I went what, off on a tangent. What for you? Uh, what does your true potential look like? Like, what is that to you? 
I think it's just complete freedom, right? So I can pick up and go with my, my family on a vacation on a whim, right? So there's the financial freedom that comes with that, but also the freedom of being committed to like my workplace right now. I have that nine to five at the JCC the fitness center, uh, being free from that, enjoy the work, but having full financial independence and uh, my time is my own, right? I think that's what we're all striving for. We all kind of put material things, material goals as the uh, as the end goal kind of thing. But it's really what comes with that that we all want. So so it's it's just that freedom to choose what to do with every day I wake up, right? Make that my own because t- time is our most valuable resource. And I've been learning that over the years because I've always kind of I've been fixated on the financial um, achievements when in fact, I think it's the other stuff I actually wanted that comes with that, right? Hopefully I express that in an okay way. I like what you said there that you you wanted to, you focused on the financial but realized that it was the other things that mattered more. Um, I want to, can we, I want to explore that a little bit. What, like, how, how did you come to that? I think it's actually been a fair bit of uh, personal development reading wise, reading some of the great uh, books of our time, right? Magic of Thinking Big, um, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. Uh, There's several others. Um, Also, just reading blogs from fellows in the industry. Some of them talk about this, personal development. And some people talk about it who are on the the other end of that, right? Like Sol Orwell, I believe that's his last name, with examine.com. He has a personal blog now and he wrote about, you know, he's kind of achieved all that, but it's the time that it's afforded him that's really valuable to him and what he's realized um, through achieving what he's achieved. So I think it's a combination of things, but also, I mean, I might achieve something financially, get a new car or something, and the new car smell lasts a week and I realize... Well, that wasn't really what I was striving for. <laughs> it's a nice ride, but um, it's it's not really going to give me that long term satisfaction that I'm looking for. How does how do you think uh, that? Because it sounds very similar to sort of like what our clients struggle with, uh, you know, at times. Um, what do you think? You know, are the things that in your instance, what, what's the money that clients are looking at, but not realizing that it's the other things that they want. Yeah, I know exactly. So yeah, like they'll talk about, you know, a six pack, getting abs or you know, showing off their new physique at the beach or something. When in fact, it's how they feel when they get to that point, right? It's how they feel in that new dress or that fit suit, at that work event. And so it's sort of the, the person they become in their new, <laughs> new body. That's really what gives them the satisfaction. And so... I think I know where you're going with that. It's it's definitely something you have to dig to get out of people because rarely are they going to say the actual motivation for why they've reached out to you. Um, often they'll start with that superficial, the physical part when you need to kind of go beyond that and really paint the picture for them of why they want to do that in the first place. You know, uh, talking about feelings is, uh, it's funny that it's sort of, uh, we kind of talked about that in, in talking about your feelings with your, your significant other and, and how men sort of get away from that. Uh, you know, and in the, the men's, you call yours a man's formation. Um, I, uh, I was trying to be, uh, you know, I have a, a men's group going as well uh, right now um, with some guys. And that's the thing that really came out from all of, the interviews that I've done with them is they're 30. They're in their thirties. Like they don't necessarily care about six pack abs. Like they're married, you know, they have a long time girlfriend. Like they, they're not, I think in the world of, of dating, you think that, Oh, if I get the abs, like a girl's going to take my shirt off and then like, I'm going to have a better, and you probably will have a better sex life. I mean, you're going to have a, like, you're going to feel better about yourself. So like you're going right. to be more confident to go out there and talk to women that you would normally shy away from. So yeah, your sex life is going to be better. 
Um, but they talked about the feeling, you know, man, I like, I'm tired of feeling like I don't have any energy. I'm tired of feeling like, uh, you know, I, like I'm weak. I'm tired of feeling like I'm 10 years older than I like, than I am. Like, I feel like a, like, I feel like what I think a 45 year old man feels like, and I'm not Mm -hmm. even in my, I'm like 30 or 31. Um, and I think getting that feeling, uh, is, is in chasing that feeling is far and more important than the abs. Now that doesn't mean that like, once you get abs, if you, you know, see abs that like, you're not going to feel great. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that feeling can come from a, like many different things. That feeling can come from like, you know, your pants being uh, looser. It can come from seeing the scale drop. Um, it can come mm-hmm. from being like, Oh man, I got my strength back. Like you might not have the abs yet, but like you got the strength. So you're feeling great. Um, what is, what makes you feel like sh- training, uh, you know, creating content, whatever, like what, what feeling are you chasing? Yeah. It, it sinks that satisfaction of a job that well done. And so that could apply to the gym. Obviously I, I love training. Uh, I know it's not for everybody, but I've really been addicted to the gym. I pretty much replaced video games with the gym, uh, going back 15 years now. And I've consistently been going ever since. And I, I love that satisfaction of a good workout completed, how much energy I feel afterwards, how good I feel about myself. But also when I, you know, ship an article, there's that same satisfaction, right? I think we're always chasing that that dopamine hit or that completion of something that we're striving for. So that has to be refilled every day, I find. So if it's not through a workout, it's through an article, it's through a great, you know, testimonial from a client that comes in. He's had a great, you know, last month of progress. All these things just kind of compound on top of each other um, to improve your, your life satisfaction and keep you kind of striving towards why you, you do this in the first place, right? All right. All right. I like it. Um, let's go to a couple more uh, fun questions. Uh, Mitch, if you could go anywhere in a time machine, where would you go? Oh, shit. Uh, I'm a big, big hockey fan, right? So I probably want to go back hmm, to Stanley Cup final with all the greats. Like I'm, I'm thinking like Gretzky's era, right? When Gretzky, most people are familiar with that name. When the Oilers were on a, like a five year run winning the Stanley Cup, I'd love to go and kind of be able to fly on the wall in that locker room and see, you know, what those players went through to, achieve greatness in their sport uh, and to win, be so dominant at the professional level like that. So that would probably be the first thought that comes to my head is uh, seeing what made, made those teams so great, made those individuals so great at their chosen sport. And I obviously would pick up some lessons from that, but just to, to see that hockey, something that was before uh, I was born, I think, or may have been very young at that age, in his early 80s. Uh, so that that's the first one that jumps out. Uh, you got a hot tub time machine or what? Uh, I mean, I wish I had a hot tub time machine. Oh. Uh, I I would just I would hang out in a hot tub with Rob Corddry because I I just think he's hysterical. Um, <laughs> that would that would that would, that would be awesome. Um, totally. And and you know Chevy Chase just randomly shows up and, and like tells you something and you're like oh my god Chevy Chase. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> All right, next one. Uh, what store would you max your credit card out at? Oh, uh, let's see. You know, I'm not a big shopper. I don't really value much uh, in terms of clothes and things like that. So it wouldn't be a clothing store. Um, let's, you know, I, I have a weird thing for uh, nice appliances. So this is the most unsexy answer you've ever gotten on this question. But I would go to, I would go to Sears. Uh, all right. Nice uh, stainless steel fridge, matching oven, range top. I guess I'm at that age now where house house stuff matters. I don't know. 
I would have had a cooler answer for you maybe five years ago. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, man. Nothing. Hey, max it out, max <laughs> it out at Sears. Uh, that's that's uh, right. For those who are listening and you're asking, what is Sears? Um, please do some research uh, and Google that. Um, <laughs> Sears used to be like one of the largest companies in the world. Um, and, and they've kind of not done so well in the last uh, that's right. decade. Thanks to, actually, a lot of people aren't doing so well thanks to Amazon and the internet. But hey, progress. I used to work at Sears, actually. Did you really? Believe it or not, I was a security guard for them. when I was in uh, moonlighting during university. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Uh, nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, what's the craziest thing you saw as a security guard? Ah, uh, yes. Good question. Uh, there was a guy trying on high heels and walking back and forth. Now, I, I don't judge, but, but he ended up running out of the store in the high heels he'd stolen. So he was the easiest thief to catch. He lost one halfway through the parking lot, and then we ended up uh, tackling him near the, near the main through fair with one, one high heel still intact. Um, so that is one of many oddball stories that you would, wouldn't imagine there would be at a, a Sears Pool Park security uh, team. But it, believe it or not, there was a lot of crazy shit that went down. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, what's the most money you've ever spent on uh, fast food while drunk? Oh, God. Oh. Well, this is going back when I was pretty heavy, too, in university. And we we would hit a cheap bar near our near where we lived. Like, cheap in Canadian terms was 250 a drink, I think, at that time. Uh, which was, you know, we'd get hammered on that. But uh, it also had McDonald's literally right around the corner. And, uh, I mean, the drive through is the only thing open. So we walked through. We pooled our assets, what cash we had left. And I think it was close to $80 uh, between the four of us. And we got $79 worth of, uh, <laughs> of McDonald's fries and burgers and went to one of the guy's apartments down the road. And I don't think there was a fry left. It was, it was pretty epic. Felt like shit the next day. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, man, that's a, that's a, I can only imagine like how many burgers and, uh, and fries that was. That's crazy. Uh, Mitch, uh, what's the last new thing you tried? Oh God. Uh, new thing. That's a good question. I tried, uh, what was, was one of, I don't even know what they call these things. Those they're new age skateboards. My nephew had one. It's like a, some sort of, I don't know. There's a name for it. Mike Tyson fell down on it. You know what those are? Oh, those, uh, like, um, yeah, it's like the hoverboard. hoverboard. It's not a hoverboard. I know what you're talking about though. Yeah. 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 So I tried one of those. I didn't fall like Tyson, but it was awkward. (laughs) Didn't get far with it. Would not recommend you, you blow 200 bucks on them. All right. All right. Um, Mitch, what's the, and now we're going back into sort of uh, fitness and, and life, and then we've got like 10, 10, 15 minutes here before we'll, we'll wrap up. What's the one thing you do every day that keeps you successful in fitness or life um, that your clients might not know about? I don't know if I've written about this one, but uh, every night before I uh, go to sleep, I kind of write out my big three items for the next day, the things I think are going to be high priority to move me forward in life, not just business-wise, but uh, personally as well. So I keep it to three or four items, and that kind of sets the tone for the day the next morning when I wake up. You know, I'm not chasing the day, um, responding to emails right off the hop. I have those those four main items to uh, kind of keep me focused, and, you know, work those those couple of magic hours in the morning on, uh, on moving me forward. All right. All right, I like that. I like that. Um, I, I will say for myself, writing down what I want to accomplish the next day, uh, the night before, has been huge for me. Um, mm-hmm. It's been a little different in New York because I don't have my whiteboard, so I can't like write it down, um, which is an right. excuse. I should use like a, a pad of paper. Um, but uh, mm-hmm. you know, the first whiteboard are good. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, all right. I, li- I like that one. I like that one. Um, Mitch, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about your clients and stuff before we sort of wrap up with some more manhood and, uh, and man stuff. Um, what's the most important value that you try to display to your readers and clients? 
most important value. I think it's just, you know, no shortcuts, especially writing about fitness, but in general, writing about anything. There's always that tendency to, uh, to try to sell the shiny object, right, the quick fix. And that's what a lot of the fitness, you know, fitness products out there tend to do, right? Get shredded in 20 days or less. When I try to take the other angle, because I know it's a process, that first year it took me every every day of those 365 to lose those 50 pounds. And sure, maybe could have done a little quicker, a little more expertise, a little more guidance. But, but knowing that, it's it's hard to get them out of the mindset that they think one pound loss a week is a failure when in fact they're right on schedule in a lot of cases. So that's sort of the message I try to beat over people's heads in my writing, um, in my client conversations as well, that you know, you're doing everything right, stick to the game plan because you're losing on the scale, even one, two pounds, that's that's progress right there. It's not going to be a perfect linear drop, right? Or else you'd be zero pounds by the end of the year. So that, that's sort of the message. I know a lot of the good guys in fitness do the same. Uh, it's, it's about, you know, setting good habits, being consistent over time, and that's what's going to really reward you in the end. Um. Yeah, I was uh, uh, talking to James Clear about habits and, and things uh, this weekend, um, and uh, you know, it's. I think it's hard to sort of start a habit. Like, it, it, I mean, obviously it is. Like, and it, it's just something you have to do every day. Um, and sort of uh, what has worked for me, and this is just anecdotal evidence for myself. Like, uh, is the notion and I wrote about this of practicing where you want to be. So like, what does, you know, a, what do successful writers do? Well, they read every day. Okay. So I'm just going to read every day, uh, like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever. Like I'll, I, it will expand over time. But like, if that's one thing they do, I pick one thing because some of them will be like, Oh, I read like uh, 10 books a month. Dude, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. You know, like, mm -hmm. but if you break it down, they do something every day. Like what, what does, uh, what do the most successful, you know, people who have lost a lot of weight and kept it off do like they eat lean protein and veggies. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So like I can, I can eat more veggies. There you go. Like practice that every day, have veggies at every meal. Um, you know, don't, don't look at it as like, I have to start this whole new thing. Uh, and go from like zero to 60, like pick one thing that they do really well at and get really good at that and then add other stuff in, but practice where you want to be, uh, instead of trying to like, I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I totally agree with yeah. you there. I mean, I read your latest article. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's where people usually go wrong when they try to start this on their own is, you know, they adopt a fitness model diet when they haven't even been exercising at all. Right. And you're bound to fail when you go on something like that. So literally just, you know, being aware of your plate and getting half of, half of your plate with protein and vegetables. If you're, if you're doing that, you're well on your way for that, that first uh, first habit, those first 10 pounds, no, no doubt. So uh, tying that in uh, and coming back in them to talking about, you know, uh, your, what keeps you going and being the man that you want to be in your life, what is one thing you practice every day uh, – in, in the, you know, practice where you want to be, so you know where you want to be. What is one thing you do every day uh, that fits the ideal of the man you view or that you want to be in the future? Yeah, well, I've actually I've taken up meditation in the last year. And I find that really gives me clarity. Often, right after a workout, when I'm really amped up, is when I'll do that. Seems like the best time to really wind down quickly. And I find I just I keep a good perspective on things. I get ideas. Even though I shouldn't have my mind racing during that, of course, I tend to get my best ideas when I'm just uh, me and my thoughts. Often I'll be listening to Bob Proctor on YouTube or something, so I don't uh, get too many thoughts in my head. That kind of keeps me focused on it. But I find, I mean, I consistently saw meditation coming up in the ideal man that I follow online and a lot of the writings. Um, and I just found this has got to be something that's worth doing. I know it's not for everybody, but I, I really fell in love with it. I find I really get a calm feeling over me afterwards that uh, sometimes I can be a little too amped up. So this kind of balances me out nicely. So I, I swear by that. I do it every day. 
could be three minutes, could be ten minutes. But I find that's that's really helped me um, to kind of focus in on myself in the last year or two. All right. All right. I like that, Mitch. I like that. Um, how, all right, so what I need to know, and like I've done meditation uh, a little bit in the past, but uh, it's, and I know you're probably going to say, dude, totally do it. Like it'll help you turn your mind off a little bit. Um, but how, how did you get into like what what were the things that you had to do uh, or that you do to get yourself in that state when your mind is all over the place? You know, it's it just it starts with that YouTube track. Um, I mean, I don't know. It's Bob Proctor meditations. You can probably YouTube that, search it out. I find if I don't have that going, it's, it's kind of just triggers the habit. Once I turn that on, I get into a quiet space. Often at the gym, just on a mat in the corner. I'm not doing any. A crazy yoga pose or anything. I'm just laying there, uh, and then my headphones on, that track on, and I may only make it five minutes in, but it's a 20, 30 minute track, so you can go as long as you want, really. But I find that kind of sets the stage, gets me breathing uh, deeply, and kind of counting what he's saying instead of thinking in my own head. And I find that kind of that's what really focuses me in. If I try to do it without any prompting, I don't seem to get very far with it. So that would be my tip for anyone that wants to try that is, is find a track that you can tolerate, you can listen to, uh, that kind of really relaxes you in the moment. All right. All right. Um, is that something you've seen your clients grab onto and have success with? Uh, some. It depends on their personality type. Uh, I do have some type A's that are constantly traveling for work, constantly on, right? A lawyer in one case. And... Uh, uh, I made that kind of a mandatory focus of his first month with me was getting in the meditation as much so as doing the workout session. I want him to make that a priority. So he, he, anecdotally in his experience, he's been telling me that's actually helped him kind of balance out uh, and kind of turn off his mind after he gets off work. He works out and he does that. And so his night is his own. He's not really uh, racing or thinking of the day ahead uh, in most cases is what has been his experience anyway. All right, all right, cool, um, Mitch. What is what's one thing you would? You, uh, we're going to wrap up here. What's one thing you want to leave the audience with? Uh, you know, before we before we head out. You know, we've talked a lot about sort of uh, you know uh, the idea. You know, of men like talking about our feelings, talking, uh, getting that stuff out there, defining sort of who we are. Uh, you know, as a male identity today, and not being our fathers or our grandfathers or what the media portrays us. Uh, and we talked about, you know, your, your fitness history and, and where you came from and, and, uh, <laughs> you just up and quit video games. You're just like, nah, fuck it. I'm done. Uh, and haven't even looked back. <laughs> um, so like we talked about a lot of really, really cool stuff, but is there anything you want to leave the audience with before uh, we say goodbye? I think it's just two words. Just start whatever that is. Nowadays we have so much access to information that we almost get overwhelmed, but it also this creates so much great opportunities for us to whether it's starting a business or getting in shape or, you know, traveling. There's so many opportunities and people tend to overthink them, overanalyze. Their brain wants them to stay in their comfort zone, right? And it's trying to send you signals to stay where you are. It's not safe to do what you want to do. But I think you need to kind of shutter those, those brain waves coming at you and just go all in on what you want to do. I mean, it, it's so rewarding on the other side if you just take that first leap that first step um, I mean it's pretty open end here but whatever you want your brain or your head is telling you is something you really want something you feel will you know move your life forward go for it awesome all right all right I like that Mitch uh, if people want to know more about you if they want to read your articles or follow you on on social and check out some of the uh, the cooking videos that uh, that you do online uh, and uh, all your other shenanigans as well where can they find you on social yes I do wear a mankini in some videos so you may want to censor your viewing Mitch uh, facebook.com slash Calvert fitness trainers um, that is me. Uh, also on Instagram, Mitch Calvert Fitness. Yeah, check me out. Start with my website. That's where I put most of my uh, my articles, and there's some links to, to find me elsewhere on the web from there. Awesome. Well, guys, I'll have 
links to all of that as well. SideQuestFitness.com slash Mitch Calvert. That's M-I-T-C-H uh, C-A-L-V-E-R-T. Uh, and I'll have that up there for you as well. So you can get all the sh- everything we talked about, books, uh, articles, uh, all the shenanigans, uh, you can get over there on the website as well. So, Mitch, thank you so much for coming on, man. I'm so glad we finally got uh, got this one under our belts and got uh, and got it accomplished. No, thanks, Robbie. I appreciate you having me on. We'll hopefully uh, connect at one of these future conferences soon. Step up and you gotta get it fitness. Host Rob at the moment and the quest is you gotta check in and wreck it. You're breaking personal records and with the help of the guests, you won't be guessing on the lessons. That's a plus five fears. Got a low key bamf right here. You wanna meet them? There's no better way to greet them than to strike a boss pose. Take a look into the mirror.